Hey guys, and welcome to Beasts and Beyond. I am your host, Ashers. I'm joined this week by co-host, Jimothy Strange. Jimothy, how are you? I am doing great, Ashers. How are you? Oh, super excited to be here. Um, this is uh, different. It's different because... <laughs> I don't have to tell you about my weekend. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I could, but I, you know, I think people already heard it this week if they're listening to the regular Wednesday show and they should be. So absolutely. Um, they should. <laughs> this is a new format. Um, since you are the first, you get to be the lucky one uh, to um, do the first shows with me here on uh, this one and, 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 and the other one. Um, so very exciting stuff. Um, yeah. I'm excited to be the guinea pig for sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, so people that are here already know what the title of the episode is, so it's no surprise. Um, we are here to talk about um, specifically uh, the Kentucky Goblins, more specifically the um, Kelly Hopkinsville encounter. Um, what's your history with this with this story? This is one of my my favorite paranormal stories. Uh, any events of high strangeness, this usually comes to mind. You know, when people ask me what's my favorite one, this one's up there. I've got a tattoo of the the drawing of the Kentucky Goblins. Like this, this is one of my favorite stories. It's it's always been up there. I've heard a lot of interviews in recent years <clears throat> with uh, uh, Geraldine Sutton Stith. You know, one of the the descendants there. I don't think she was. I don't think she was born maybe at the time that this happened, but you know, she was family with all of those folks there. So I've heard a lot of interviews with her and and she's still, you know, great spirits about everything as well. So it's it's always been one of my my favorite most fascinating topics to dive into. Yeah, I agree. It's 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 a fun one. Um you know, I have talked about it myself uh, on the Wednesday show. I talked about it on other shows pretty extensively. Um, I somehow, whenever I, I give a lecture, it somehow always seems to come up. And I, I don't know why, but hey, I, you know what? Any chance that I have to talk about the goblins, I'm here for it. Absolutely. Um, so so you, per, I, you know, I noticed you per, you use the term, actively use the term Kentucky goblins. Is that your go-to? Because they're called different things, right? Um, but you like that term for them. I have. That's what I've kind of always thought of them as is just they're the Kentucky Goblins, that or the Hopkinsville Goblins. They're kind of interchangeable with me, but Kentucky Goblins is is kind of just my catch all term for it. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, like I said, d different people call it different things. So, um, I say, I actually, I was in, on on my show notes here <laughs> where I was writing this up. Uh, it's titled Hop Gobs. So Hop Gobs, nice. That's. <laughs> That's really cool. That sounds like a really cool, uh, like a punk band name. That Hop or Gobs. an IPA. <laughs> there probably is a Hop Gobs IPA out there. <laughs> probably. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, well, let's just go ahead and uh, we will, you know, kind of get into the, uh, the meat and potatoes of the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter. Um, so... Uh, this happened on the night of August 21st in 1955. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of discrepancy about a particular detail about the story that has bothered me for many years. I can't figure out who all was there. Yeah, that's that's kind of a thing. Like you, You've got a story of like, 25 people, right. give or take sometimes, and it's, it is kind of a... Uh, a jumbled mess but hey what you know what they say when when the truth becomes legend print the legend so <laughs> and you know that the press sure did do that uh when this came out there are other details that we can kind of go back and we can kind of fact check on but like who all was at the house that day for sure um it, it's, it's kind of a mystery but um to my knowledge i'm going to try to run down this list um, so at a farmstead there, right on the line of, it's it's the Kelly Hopkinsville Goblins because it happened right on this line between Kelly and Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Yeah. Um, so on a farmhouse there, we're going to say, the farmhouse was owned by Glenny Lankford. Okay, this is the matriarch of a family. I believe all these people that I'm going to name are her children, and I believe that they were all in attendance, and they ranged from age seven all the way up to to adults. Um, so I'm going to go down that list. We've got uh, Lonnie. We've got Charlton. Charlton, C-H-A-R-L-T-O-N, Charlton. Charlton. Uh, <laughs> we've got Mary. Um, we've got Lucky. And we've got J.C., 
Then we have Lucky and JC's wives, Vera and Eileen, I believe. Eileen's brother, OP. <laughs> and their neighbors, <laughs> Billy Ray Taylor and June Taylor. Um, so. With it being Kentucky, you've got to have an OP and a Billy Ray. That's just that's how it is. <laughs> I grew up right next to one on either side of me. So that's that's how it is. Lucky is optional. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you got to have an Opie and a Billy Ray. Um, so all these people are they're kind of having a get together. Several of, of the adults in the mix um, are actually uh, carnies, the carnival workers. Oh, yeah. And uh, they were visiting, you know, they were visiting Glenny, uh, you know, Mom, Mama, Mama Glenn, um, you know, on their travels. And so other people had also come. That's why Billy Ray was there. I guess he was visiting his buddy Lucky anyway. Billy Ray is important because he goes outside and he walks off to the well there on the property. And, you know, as he's approaching the well, he looks up in the sky and he sees something very strange. Um, he ends up seeing a, a bright colored light of some sort. Um, but what's interesting about the light was that he mentioned that it had an exhaust coming off of it that happened to be like different. He, he said different colors of the rainbow. It's very colorful exhaust coming off of a bright light. And he goes in the house and he tells everybody about it. And, you know, they're, they all just think, you know, he's a jokester. He's a carny. Yeah. You know, he's funny. You know, he's not, he's, it's, it's not serious. He's telling tales. Um, he's telling tales. And then the family <laughs> dog, maybe dogs, again, we don't know who all was there, um, started acting very strange. And this is where the story takes a, a, an even weirder turn. So before I get into that, I'm going to stop there. Well, do you have any opinions about what Billy Ray had seen? See, it's it's one of those things. It's like, what could he have seen at that time? You know, nowadays, people see stuff all the time. And it's it's going to be satellites or even still when you've got like, your SpaceX launches and people will see the rockets with the giant oh, plumes coming off of it. And yeah. It's, it's still just a rocket, but if you don't know what you're looking at, it looks crazy. But this is 1955. We're, you're not going to be seeing all that, that you're not going to have. When, yeah. when did the first satellite go up? It would have been around that time, but I don't think it was necessarily then. And even then they, they wouldn't be actually Sputnik didn't even go up until 1957. So you wouldn't be seeing that. So to see something in the sky like that and, and, you know, claiming that it's got exhaust on it, I, I, that's you could maybe it's a fireball could be a fireball in the sky like that's going to have a little bit of a tail and a little bit of a streak. And it's going to be a colorful thing that you can see, especially at 7 p.m. You know, in that that twilight kind of of time of day, it's going to show up if you've got a bright fireball streaking across the sky. So, you know, the skeptical side of me says maybe that's what he saw maybe it was just a meteor coming through like that's 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 a possibility that you can't rule out so is that allegedly when this happened was 7 p.m it was somewhere around 7 p.m yeah that was when billy ray had seen his because let me tell you 7 p.m in august in kentucky it's not twilight it's bright as fuck outside still yeah i guess it's yeah this is august so it's august 21st so that's Okay, yeah. So then that's that changes it a little bit. It's still going to be pretty bright, yeah. Because being here in Kentucky, the sun doesn't go down until nine or nine thirty during the the summertime. So yeah, it's, yeah. he's still going to have plenty of plenty of sunshine it's, in the sky. So yeah, it's daylight. I think that's interesting. Um, hmm. So some some people do mention that you know at the time there was a meteor shower going on, and you know potentially what Billy Ray had seen was was a meteor and. Um, Meteors are interesting. You ever seen one before? Like in oh, person? Oh, of them. Yeah, they, yeah. They're insane. Um, they they do give off some really weird colors. Uh, we had one incident here. I think it was in 2020 or maybe it was 2021. Um, but we had one that had a green tail. And, Ooh. you know, they, they will have these, these multicolored tails. And those tails will kind of chill. So, like, if you have a green tail to kind of oscillate between, like, green and you know light green and kind of yellowish um yeah you know you'll have the red ones that are kind of red and orange and yellow um you know which could definitely give off that colors of the rainbow look um yeah and it would definitely and, look like an exhaust from the tail coming off of it for sure 
Right. So, I mean, a meteor would look very strange to somebody like Billy Ray Taylor, who I'm sure doesn't study science. And (laughs) (laughs) Um, not to knock on these people. I will say that. I I will stop that. I'll stop that right here. Um, All the jokes about all the hillbillies and, you know, drinking their moonshine and this, that and the other. um, I, I think that they were all very sober when this happened. And I think that that is something um, I think that even if they weren't and they're just drinking, you don't hallucinate things when you drink. It doesn't happen no. that way. And um, the the thing, Glennie was a good old fashioned Christian woman and she did not allow them to drink at her house. No, she wasn't having it. And no. if you know anything about a Southern mama, she <laughs> ain't having it. That's what <laughs> Uh, she she will make you sleep outside if she smells alcohol in your breath. So, um, yes. Uh, so anyway, back to the story. He goes inside, and like I said, we got to the point. He's telling everybody about it. The kids are kind of freaking out. The adults are like, "Stop, stop scaring them kids!" And uh, then the dogs start freaking out. And when they kind of went to go investigate what the dogs were freaking out about, um, wow, well, this is when they encountered their first. Uh, Little, little green man well he wasn't green um but let's dispel that rumor right now it wasn't green um these creatures whatever they were for for lack of a better term the goblins um were anywhere from about two feet to four feet uh the official police report says three and a half feet so like i said anywhere between two feet and four feet <laughs> they probably all weren't the same exact height okay um yeah, it's just like people <laughs> right um you know they they looked very odd they actually gave off a like a metallic shimmer to them and they were gray in color um they looked very humanoid so they had feet and hands um as a matter of fact they described the hands as being very claw-like um and some the original reports i don't think really disclosed this much but later on came out that they had like weird maybe ears or maybe they were wearing some type of headgear or something or headphones on their ears um, that protruded from the sides of the head. And uh, they weren't happy about this. They they weren't very excited about these intruders on their property. And so um, between Lucky and Billy Ray, um, these are our main characters in the story, mm-hmm. um, they tried to shoot at these things. Well, yeah, it's the mid-50s. You're in very rural oh, yeah. Kentucky. That's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to shoot first and ask questions later. Exactly. And uh, they, tried to, they tried to shoot at them, and they... Um, believe they hit them and when they said that when they hit them the bullets it didn't really affect them any and it made like a weird like dropping a, a screw in a bucket type of noise yeah like in a metal bucket yep like a ping and uh so we'll we'll again we'll pause there and kind of recollect what, what do you what do you think about the appearance i think the from the description of it I, I I love it. It's fantastical. You know, it, it kind of sounds like you can't tell whether that's their skin or if that's, you know, a uniform outfit or something like that on them. But then it is funny, too, because if you've seen a picture of like the great horned owls, uh, mm-hmm. I saw one online that they were like lined up right next to each other. And when you set the sketch of what the goblin supposedly looked like right next to an actual great horned owl, it's like. Okay, yeah, I could see how somebody not knowing what that is could mistake those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm here in Kentucky. I've never once seen a wild owl. So I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're more prevalent over there in Hopkinsville in the western part of the state more than where I'm at. Uh, I've never seen a single wild owl. And I got to say, I might be if it was on the ground and like walking toward me. Maybe I would be a little scared of it if I didn't know what I was looking at, especially at that time. You know, at that time, there's all kinds of fantastical reports of, you know, everything going on. So it's it's kind of like, yeah, you know, I can I can sort of believe anything at that point that it, even if it was just an owl, I'm going to shoot at it and we'll see what happens after that. But no, it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. I got the gun. All right, let's shoot at it. We'll pick it up later. 
Yeah, owls aren't very um, sociable creatures. It's like a squirrel, right? You see damn squirrels <laughs> everywhere. You know, <laughs> um, owls usually you'll hear them, but you don't see them a lot, and it's kind of a rare occurrence. It's not completely unheard of to see them. Um, I have but, I have heard them, but yeah, never seen them. Right. You usually don't usually don't see them, and uh, so to think that. Okay, so hold on a sec. Let's back up, listeners. Why are we bringing up owls? That's because that's one of the theories is that the this family could have seen um a, a couple of great horned owls and they mistook it for something else um which they do have you know that feature of having the something protruding from the sides of the heads you know um they could also potentially have clawed hands because they have clawed hands well they have feet, yeah but you know still <laughs> <laughs> um, there are some similarities to, to, you know, you can definitely draw the similarities between the great horned owl and the, um, goblins, um, you know, and we'll kind of go over, uh, theories a little bit later on in the show and kind of why, you know, why, what we think personally, and why we think what we think, um, the appearance to me is very interesting because it resembles <laughs> very much uh, a, a creature that happened um, a couple of years earlier, 1952, the Flatwoods Monster. And what I mean by that is that um, the Flatwoods Monster, even though it's much larger and, you know, there are things that are different, it also had that weird metal body. Yes. Um, so this isn't something that's completely unheard of. Now, did the Sutton family, for lack of a better term, because again, who the hell all was there we don't know but did, did the Sutton <laughs> family hear of the flatwoods monster story and 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 make that bit up probably not i'm gonna say um <laughs> you know <laughs> you're talking the 1950s again the news of this stuff even though you you did have newspaper and you did have things make headlines and things like that you didn't have uh, the information that we have now <laughs> you know <laughs> And, and especially um, if you, you're working the carny circuit and you're hearing these stories from, you know, other people traveling around and such like that, it's going to be a game of strange telephone for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, did they pick up on that detail? I, I'm not sure. That's not I mean, the, the metal bodies thing is a detail that gets left out of a lot of these stories where it is involved um you know which is strange it's just the detail people overlook and i don't know why i think it's very important so yeah that's that's my take on it um i think they they look neat um obviously you know if you've seen drawings of them a lot of people um you know make them look more humanoid they look a lot like the um Oh my god! The one Pokemon is based off of them, and I can't think of the Sableye. name of the Pokemon. Thank you, Sableye. Yeah, that's, um, that's it. That's what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good depiction, except for the diamond in the chest and the and the purple fur. But yeah, <laughs> um, you know uh, the shape roughly. I mean, that is kind of what what we've grown to know and love. Um, but the term "little green men" came from this incident, and uh, the part about them being green is strange and doesn't really. It just kind of got added onto the media later on down the line. Yeah, and, as uh, as the media is wont to do. Right, they they <laughs> love to exaggerate, and that's also probably why we have no idea who all was there. Um, yeah, but <laughs> it doesn't help. Um, so they start shooting at this one creature it doesn't react they go back into the house and they're like well maybe we'll just go away and it didn't go away it did not um <laughs> it Spoiler actually alert. <laughs> it's it, uh yeah it didn't go away it, it, it brought friends with it um <laughs> <laughs> and you know one goblin turned into probably three or four um, so another media misconception was that there was like 15 to 25 of them. Um, well, guys, they weren't <laughs> out there counting how many there were, first of all. Um, so there could have just been two, you know, at minimum, there was at least two. And I know that much. But they they said that it was maybe three or four um, during the initial report. Um, and these things were uh, trying to get in the house. They were you know, walking along the roof, trying to get in the top. They were peeking in the windows, trying to get in that way. At one point, they had checked to go see if they were gone. Uh, and I believe it was Lucky that walked out the front door and one of them had reached down, was on the awning there above the porch yeah. and had reached down and tried to grab him. That's that's uh, one of my favorite parts of that whole story is that it's <laughs> it's kind of like that horror movie, like 
did we get them all? And then like the web talon reaches down from the porch above. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so, I, you know, I gotta say if these were owls, that's fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> because I do believe that that happened. I believe that something grabbed him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <At minimum. laughs> Whatever it was, something reached out and grabbed them. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they were like, oh man, fuck this shit. We gotta get, we gotta leave. And, uh, man, this was my family friendly show. I gotta, I gotta pull it back. But, <laughs> <laughs> So they said, fuck this shit, and we got to leave. And uh, <laughs> they managed to get all 50 people in one car and drive down to the police station. Well, they were um, carnies, so they just borrowed one of the clown cars, obviously. <laughs> right. <laughs> just all piled in the clown car and drove down. Um, but when they got to the police station, I mean, you know, these are, we're talking small town Kentucky. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody's familiar with this family. Um, these are men who are carnies. Carnies are, let me tell you guys, I, listen, I was married to a carny. These dudes are hard. Okay. They are hard. <laughs> Um, they walk into the police station and they are very freaked out clearly. And they're like, Oh, what's going on? And they're like, Oh, we've been, we've been fighting them for like four hours, you know? And they're like, who's them? What is happening? What are you talking about? Um, and you know, at that, and at that point they tried to kind of relay the story to the officers, but they were excited. Yes. That's a word for it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they were, they were very, everybody's all over the place. When you're one guy trying to take a report from 50 people, it's difficult um, to piece together what's being <laughs> talked about. Um, but the police officers kind of mistook this as they were having some type of uh, altercation with like maybe a neighbor or something or like other locals. And they were concerned that they were having a shootout with somebody else. And so they went ahead and went down to the property to investigate and um, they didn't find anything. So, <laughs> yeah, until they and they searched till like almost like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, like they were out, out there for a did. while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, didn't find anything. So you know, they just chalked it up to meh. You know, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. You know, at that point, they'd kind of gotten the story a little more clear about these weird goblin creatures. And once the police officers left, and the family kind of felt a little bit better about you know they didn't find anything, right? They're like, it's fine. Let's just go to bed. The creatures come back again they return they return and i don't really know what the ending to that is i mean do you they just what they just hung out in the house until they left i i think they just kind of hunkered down and held out because one one of the stories that i had read was that they didn't even go to the police department the first time until they were out of ammunition that was when they decided to make a break for it that first time when they they headed down then so the it's it's again it's one of those things where it depends on the variation you're reading on it that they were visited again some of them just said it ended after so it's again it's it's which version of the legend do you find there with it yeah but it's the in the in the one i have seen it where they have come back but they just they just kind of had to hide inside the house until morning came and then they went back yeah yeah, the aftermath of it is really sketchy and really weird. So, um, there, so there, the neighbors allegedly, the neighbors had come forward and said that the whole family packed up and fucking left after those after they came back again. However, there's another variation of events that says that they actually did not leave, um, that they stayed at the house. And once the story started breaking in the media that this has happened, they had been selling tickets for people to come hang out at the house. And so it was like a dollar just to come see the house. It was like three dollars if you wanted to take a picture. And then people were starting to rip off pieces of like the foundation and stuff and take it with them. And wow. so at that point that's when they had enough and they, they actually moved out of the property and was like that ah, fuck this we don't want to, we don't want the spectacle and left um so it's it's hard to decipher which one's accurate because i'll be honest with you guys that sounds like carney behavior right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it does not sound out of character for you know for at least the profession anyway you know not speaking to them as people but right. certainly for the profession yeah i can see that like step one step one come one come all grab a piece of the wall take it with you right here only one dollar 
yeah, I, I could see that. <laughs> you know, what's what do you think about? I mean, have you heard have you heard that part of the story before? I have not heard that version of it. Everything that I had always heard on it was that they were not necessarily embarrassed or ashamed, but they kind of just didn't want to talk about it anymore. Like that they all the people are like, oh, so you saw the little green men, huh? And they were like, yeah, I'm not talking about it anymore. I don't I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with the attention and everything that comes from it. Yeah, but that that was what I have I have always read and heard. I had not heard the uh, uh, the setting up the sideshow aspect of it. Yeah. And, and and of course, that could just be a rumor. I don't know. Um, it could be accurate. Maybe they did try to set up the sideshow aspect. And then some of them were like, well, we don't want to do this. And the other I mean, maybe the, the boy, the, the Carney boys were like, yes, let's do it. And uh, Grant, you know, hand. Mama Glenn was like, hell no. You know, who knows? <laughs> um, again, there's multiple people involved. So I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. They might not have all been on the same page. Um, you know, I Billy Ray strikes me as a guy that could be like, look, we can make some money off of this. Uh, <laughs> <you> <laughs> exactly. Um, so I, you know, um, there was also a rumor that there was allegedly a glowing type of substance on the fence around the property. Yes. Um, potentially from when where they had shot the creatures. Um, but, you know, it, no samples were ever taken or anything like that for us to verify what that might have been. Some people speculate that it could have been there, but it was some type of a fungus that glows naturally. Foxfire, yes. That they could just be on the, the rotted wood of the fence there, that that was something that occurred naturally and they were seeing it then but it wasn't necessarily you know like residue or or blood or anything that that had happened from from shooting at the the invaders mm -hmm. so yeah at least there didn't seem to be any type of blood trail or, or anything like that again um no uh physical evidence was collected so I, you know i don't know yep. um there were also reports that uh the military had showed up and this is kind of true and kind of not true. Um, so when the police went down to go uh, investigate the situation, what was going on, um, they did take a couple of army officials with them. And um, that is just likely due to the fact that you've got to remember when the officers got initially got on scene there, there, they were expecting a bloodbath between humans <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so they very well could have brought a couple of a couple of army bros with them and they're like hey can you help us you know crowd control this situation um I, better I safe than sorry <laughs> right I, I don't think that it was because I, I think the officers clearly did not think that there were aliens initially um i think that you know again very much they thought that this was just people feuding um so i don't think that they would have contacted the military going hey we got aliens here you know yeah or whatever <laughs> but that's that's my personal opinion on 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 that bit um i think it's uh interesting and then i, I oh, think ahead. with them i think with them asking the soldiers to come then it wouldn't be related but had the soldiers just shown up after that's when you know like yeah. the uh the red flags start to get sent up then yes yes it would have been weird um and and uh like the story of injured cold when woodrow derenberger had his big press conference um an official from wright patterson air force base did go and go and interview him and that was weird it was like okay that's strange <laughs> sort of i i guess you know we were just getting off the tail end of project blue book <laughs> allegedly this case is in project blue book I have a hard time believing that I've read it and I feel like I would have remembered and been like, yes, that's one of the blue book cases, you know, cause, <laughs> cause I love this so much. Right. I would have been like, hell yeah, brother, it's in project blue book. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it is. So I think that's another, you know, rumor that's just kind of floating out there, which is weird. Cause you can, you could read, you, you all could go read project blue book if you want to, and you should. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it gets very boring at times. Not a very good story, but it's, <laughs> Well, here's the thing, too, that I, I wonder on it that, that I, I don't think I've heard any of it, but it, it also kind of makes me wonder if there were any Men in Black appearances that Ooh. sort of followed around this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm so not I, sure. I, I haven't heard of 
have any about this in particular um but you're right after this event happened whether or not they sold the tickets to the house or whatever <laughs> really after this event happened the family just disappeared pretty much i mean not necessarily they oh my God, they didn't go missing 411 you know they just <laughs> they just weren't in the public view about it yeah, they just stayed um, on the down low Right. They just stuck to themselves, whether they moved or not. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I think the only people, the, the only person, the only reliable source at this point um, is, uh, gosh, what's her name? The granddaughter. I think she's the granddaughter. Yeah. Geraldine Sutton Stiff. Yeah. She is um, a great resource for this. And, I, and again, the only person you could probably rely on to tell the story accurately um and she does but she only just now kind of started doing it rec in recent years is that right yeah just within the last couple of years or so she's she's been she's been on quite a few things i've heard a few interviews with her and she's she seems like a a delight to talk to i haven't gotten to meet her yet but yeah no she's she seems just like like just a joy to interact with yeah she did uh she spoke at cryptid con in 2021 and uh i was there but i didn't get to hear her speak or talk to her or anything and uh -huh. um cryptid con is just a whirlwind it's it's a lot oh yeah absolutely <laughs> um but yeah she so she does make the circuits uh i know that nowadays they do the or they had been doing the kelly green man um festival and i think that they i think they did not do it last year this year maybe. i don't i don't think they've done it for the last couple of years i i personally tried to reach out to them uh, I think ever since 2021, it's been a couple of years. I've like written to the city, like I've gone to their their town website, asking if they're going to have it, and I've not been able to get a response from anyone at all within their local government. You know, just reaching out to them. I had also heard on a a separate like live stream from some other high strangeness bros that I follow. Um, I had heard that it used to be a town where they kind of celebrated it out in Kelly in that area. And mm -hmm. then they had like like little flying saucer things and stuff everywhere. And it was part of like their town tourism. Um, but the one guy I was listening to, he was saying that the last time he was there earlier this year, it, none of that was there. Like they had gotten rid of it all. It was kind of like they were pushing it away again somehow. So hmm. I don't I don't I not having driven through there personally, I can't attest to it, but I can only say that they won't respond to my emails asking if yeah. I can come spend money in their town. And uh, <laughs> and apparently they, they, they may or may not have any of their UFO tourism stuff up anymore. So I don't know. Interesting. You know, there, I feel like in, in, in recent years, Kentucky um, <laughs> has had kind of a, I don't know, this weird like cultural die off of their weird. It's and I hate that. It's it's weird because it's it's almost it, it's kind of getting boiled down to a lot of the places that are still like in it for the weird and the strange are very commercial at this point mm -hmm. and it, it's all definitely for profit for a lot of it not not a uh, a thing where it's like interested in keeping a lot of the legends alive or anything it's like hey come give us a whole lot of money and we will tell you the story. So well, and that is unfortunate, but it, it it does keep at least some of the bigger ones alive. And and I I I support them because they are still technically small right. local businesses. So I'm I'm happy to. I just I do wish there were more <laughs> of them out there doing it still. Because there's I mean there's no shortage of of weird things around the state at all. Absolutely um, not. You know, and so I I think that that's very interesting um and some of it's not necessarily on purpose like the one okay i guess there's two paranormal museums in kentucky and they're both in somerset that's what i've heard i was i was recently back in september at a, a haunted thing for uh it was at waverly hills sanatorium and somebody else was telling me uh exactly that that there were they had met um, someone from, I, I know the one guy from the International Paranormal Museum and Research Center. Like I'm, I'm friendly with those guys. I don't, I don't know of the other one, but this is the second time that I'm being told about the other one now within a, a couple months yeah. span here. <laughs> yeah. And I know that because so I don't know what the difference is between them. Probably the names are slightly different. Um, or I'm assuming, <laughs> you know, gotta um, be something. Yeah. But I I met one of them at the Mothman Festival, and somebody was introducing us like because we just had never formally met. And they're like, oh yeah yeah yeah, you know I'm great. And I was like, yeah, how's your 
you know, how's the museum coming along? I know you guys are shut down because you had a fire. And he's like, no, that's not us. That's the other guys. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> <laughs> that's when i learned um but but yes one of them had a very bad fire and they're having a lot of struggle opening back up and they were very i mean he wasn't like oh yeah fuck those guys ha 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 they had a fire like he wasn't competitive at all he's just like yeah no they're really going through it and it's tough and he seemed very cordial and like on the same team so i say at least at least the one guy that i know from them the that sounds like something he would be you know it would be more yeah. of a collaboration than a competition <laughs> right so right. And, and that's that's what it is I find with all of my favorite people in the paranormal field are those kind of people like you obviously anything you get into, you're going to find somebody that's more competitive than collaborative. But I don't know. They're, they're they're good guys, at least at the one that I know. So hopefully it sounds like maybe they both are. Yeah. I mean, if there's two of them in the same town, I mean, God, there's enough weird for everybody. I'll go to both. You know, <laughs> um, have you have you ever been to Somerset yeah. at all? I've oh, not. there's there's fucking plenty of weird for four paranormal museums in that town but that's another story for another day is it a big is it big is it a big no city? not at all it's not that big at all hmm. i mean i have to make it i'm not far we just haven't we just haven't gone yet um west virginia's kept me very busy <laughs> And it will, it will yeah. surely. <laughs> so, and Ohio itself. I mean, my God, I live here, and it's it's you know, so there's enough. I would never have to leave really if I chose not to. <laughs> it's, um, it's same. All I got to do is just walk up, walk right. down the road, and it's like, oh, okay, here's a haunted spot. Let's just sit out here and put on our <laughs> our spirit box and close our eyes. Here's here's something new. Um, <laughs> so back back to the goblins. Um, so we'll talk about theories and kind of you know what what people think uh the initial theory not the initial theory but but one of the biggest ones that i see floating around everywhere is that again oh they're just rednecks that were partying and uh they got carried away yeah that's, then, that's the biggest try to write off is that they were just oh they were just a bunch of drunk hillbillies Right. They're just drunk hillbillies. And, you know, and as we stated that they were not that type of family. Yes, they were, they were carnies. Um, yes, they lived in Kentucky, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, you know, they weren't uh, a group of, uh, typically a group of drunken hillbillies and, and people around the local area, you know, they, they came forward with that. They, you know, gave them that credit. It was like, yeah, no, they're not that type of family. Um, so, and then of course, whether they were drunk or not, um, the other big popular theory is, is, is the great horned owl, um, that they were just seeing owls and being terrorized by owls all night. And, and just, you know, owl, they don't act like that. You know, the owls don't, <laughs> that's weird behavior I, for them. <laughs> I don't think our owls, they, they don't hunt in packs or anything like that. Do they, they don't have any sort of like herd mentality. Like I thought no, owls were just kind of like lone, like lone hunters you know some different species of owls can kind of hang out in pairs um you know partnered up but even even still um they largely stay away from humans like yeah yeah i yeah. can't imagine that there was anything interesting enough inside of that farmhouse that they were peeking in the windows and trying to get in and i mean why for what you know what what would motivate them to do that especially um, if someone's shooting at you with you know super loud noise right. and all of that that's going to scare the majority of of wildlife creatures away yes, any of them the dog tried to run away <laughs> that didn't i don't think that happened anyway but yeah no i mean that's yeah that's they're not going to continue at that point you know um just like we have it ingrained in our DNA to be deathly afraid of spiders, they have it ingrained in their DNA to be deathly afraid of humans. And yes. there's a good reason for it. You know, um, we shoot them. <laughs> yeah, they know that. <laughs> um, they know enough to know that. And yeah, if, if they were shooting at them, then they, they wouldn't have stuck around any further. But then again, of course, you know, some people say, well, they shot at them. And then, you know, they at that point in time, we're convinced they'd been seeing something else besides the owls and so they just kind of exaggerated every noise and creak in the house mm. i mean at, at that point after sure you might but not leading up to it leading up to it yeah well i mean and and you know that what reached out what reached down and, and grabbed that guy uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i guess an owl could but it just doesn't it, it I don't know. It doesn't check out for me. No. Um, so I had kind of made the connection between that and the 
Flatwoods Monster earlier. And what's interesting about the Flatwoods Monster is that they also said, the, 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 as it goes, that they saw an owl. The witnesses didn't say that, but one of the theories is that they had seen an owl. Hmm. And I thought that that was interesting. Is it significant at all? Maybe it might not be, you know. Um, but I just think that these are two very different creatures um, that are being, you know, owls are being blamed for causing. <laughs> <laughs> um, which don't have like wings or anything. You know, the goblins didn't have wings. The the flatwoods monster didn't have wings. Mothman also called an owl. He does have wings. Okay, I could kind of see that one. Um, yeah, kind but- of kind of um but the but these metallic bodies and 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 one's two feet tall and the other is 10 feet tall and you know, <laughs> I, just, I don't see it um you know and then I, again is it significant probably not um but who knows you know i just i find that interesting i used to kind of work it into some of my theories a little bit back when i was building a timeline and um and you'll you'll hear people talk about it all the time they'll be like man the 1960s was a weird time and uh you know had a lot of high strangeness in it. and it did whenever i hear that something happened and specifically 1966 i'm never surprised i'm like of course it's 66. Yeah, absolutely um, <laughs> and and so that's kind of where the trend started for me and i was like well let me go ahead and start a timeline here and then you go back and you're like man the 19 1950s that was a weird time and then you're like oh geez the 1940s we had roswell and kenneth arnold and <laughs> the men in black and the men in black first showed up and you just kind of keep going back there is no one particular weird time in history it's all fucking weird it's um, every every bit of it's weird it's just how much of it was documented yes you know and uh that's those are the facts so um is this incident related to any other i don't know um another interesting tidbit is the and I'm going to talk about the story eventually, specifically on the show. I know people want to hear about it, um, but it is the proximity of Hopkinsville to the land between the lakes. Yeah, and it's not far. It's not far at all. I mean, it's like under 30 minutes. It's very close. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the LBL uh, is known for, you know, um, puppies. And <laughs> <laughs> you could call them that. Sure. <laughs> you know they're little puppies out there um but it has a lot of other weird things kind of surrounding that area um so is it a proximity issue and maybe that's why these things were there to begin with um because another idea that i've seen posed is well what was the motive of these little guys what were they doing there anyway um do you have any theories about you know if these are aliens why they would be there See, that's the thing with a lot of the alien encounters and things. What are any of them doing there? That's what it, it's really hard to say. I don't I don't think a lot of times when people have encounters with with ETs, you know, whatever you want to call them, uh that are, you know, terrestrial based like on the ground, I feel like they're either there to make contact with something or it's an accident like a complete accident like they mm-hmm. shouldn't be there and they're just kind of wandering around kind of like someone getting lost and walking down a main street of some little town i i kind of feel like it could be something like that like obviously anything that's going to be able to you know to pilot a vehicle that can get it here is going to have some sort of intelligence to it but I, I, part of me feels like anytime you see the things out there, it's they're either scouting or they are lost. And that's mm-hmm. that that's kind of my thoughts on it. Like maybe these things are they're lost there because surely they're not based on the size of them and the way that they are described. You know, I don't think that they would be predators towards humans. So it's not like they were probably looking for a snack in Billy Ray and Lucky. Like I don't I don't think that's what they would be out for. So it was either a, a scouting thing or they were lost and their spaceship, whatever, their 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 vehicle had crashed. Billy Ray saw it and then they came that way. That's that that's that's kind of my Occam's razor with it, is that they crashed and they were walking up. If that's if we're assuming that they are ETs. They were very playful, um, which was interesting. You know, they seemed interested in um, interacting, obviously, you know, but but they had a very 
childlike demeanor. And I don't just mean that because they were small. Um, but like, you know, if, if they're that advanced, <laughs> technologically speaking, <laughs> you think that they wouldn't have an issue harming any of these people if they wanted to, if they really wanted to. Surely, yeah. You know, it's their guns weren't stopping them. Um, they they did seem very uh, like they just wanted to like hang out. I agree. I think that motive is a um, like a cop out argument that people like to use. Well, why do they do it? I don't fucking know, man. You know, <laughs> I have no well, idea. Next time you see one, bring him here and I'll ask him. But right. until then, <laughs> right? Why don't you, all right, let's just ask him. I mean, it's that simple, <laughs> right? You know, I, I don't know. Why do they mutilate cattle? I don't know. Why? Do, you know, what's the deal with crop circles? I, you know. Um, we, we don't have those answers. Um, we're talking about beings that are, you know, alleged beings, uh, of course, but beings that are so technologically advanced that they can they can board a craft and come here in some type of, we'd imagine, decently timely manner. Um, we can't even begin to speculate what they're yeah. doing here, you know? <laughs> I mean, you could, you sort of just imagine, like, Neil Armstrong bouncing around on the moon. He's going to look kind of, like, childlike and playful, too. Yeah. He's going to be peeking in some windows if he sees something right there. Like, it's the same kind of deal. <laughs> I like to imagine peeping Tom Neil Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's just peeking in like like there's some like some alien mom changing inside of a moon cave there. <laughs> He's peeking in. He gets caught and he goes to like run away on his little moon dune buggy. So and then with Buzz Aldrin just trailing right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, running behind him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very Looney Tunes like. Yeah, of course. Uh, the music plays and everything, sound effects. And then nobody on the moon believes these these other <laughs> moon inhabitants. They're like that didn't happen. These creatures with they had white skin and giant <laughs> glass heads. <laughs> One giant glass eye, and I could see. No, you're drunk off moon juice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I but no, I agree. I, I think that you know they probably had no idea what they were doing here. Um, you know, whether or not they saw a craft. So that's another thing. Are they alien? Well, okay. You know what? Actually, let's not go in there yet. Um, Jimothy, <laughs> do you do you believe? this story i i believe i believe that they believe they saw something i don't know what they saw but i absolutely believe that the family saw something something that was wild enough for them to shoot up you know hundreds of dollars worth of ammunition and shoot windows and holes in their house because they were carny workers they're not millionaires right they don't have the money to just go out and replenish this you know they're hunting you know for not for sport but that's the meat that they're going to have for the winter mm -hmm. you know that's what their their sustenance is so they it wasn't like they had the means to just be like oh jolly good fire another round it's lucky yes no it, <laughs> it wasn't anything like that like they I, so i absolutely believe that they saw something and that they were under siege by something you know what that was Great question. That's that's what we'll be discussing forever. But I absolutely believe that they did see something. I believe something happened there. I, I do, too. I, I believe this story. Um, you know, I think it's uh, I, well, well, no, I'll give the Jimothy diplomatic answer. I believe that they believe that they saw something. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's the right way. My personal opinion, I want to believe that they were aliens and that's what happened. Um, my, my professional opinion is that whatever they actually were, whether they were aliens or whether they were owls or whatever it was they were, they, they believe that they had an encounter with something anomalous. And, um, and, and for those same reasons, yeah. I mean, it, it was America at the time, but it wasn't America, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff, stuff like uh, bullets uh, were expensive. Um, stuff like new windows were expensive. And, yep. uh, <laughs> you know, you don't want to piss off Mama Glenn by shooting up holes in her house, you know? <laughs> she wouldn't have had that. Nope. Um, had there not been something. And so I, I do believe that there's something to the story. Um, they did not go on to make a bunch of money off of it. Even if they had attempted to do so, they clearly didn't um, because the story did drop off and it went into pretty much obscurity. Even now I, I, I see, um, I've seen people talk about how these, these kind of older stories are making like a resurgence in, in pop culture. And, and I don't really think it's that. I, I think it's just, the availability of the internet makes it easier to spread this information. So of course we're going to see these, these stories boom over the last 20 years, right? Because we've yeah, also yeah. seen other things boom as well. 
Um, you know, but again, they, they largely, you know, skirted off into history. And I mean, this could be a very easily forgotten about encounter, um, you know, if it weren't for things like the internet spreading it around. Um, <laughs> so, you know, none of, none of them ever wrote any books. They never did any documentaries or anything about it. Um, so what, what would, what would their motive be for lying? You know, if, if, if it wasn't to make money, yeah. um, because they, like you said, there's not notoriety or anything coming from it. They're not no. writing all these checks, a big wave of checks to the bank. So, you know, we don't even know who all was there to be like, oh, yeah, that <laughs> that uh, Billy Joe, you know, he <laughs> Billy Ray, whoever, you know, No, I mean, uh, there could have been a Billy Joe there. Like there's, there's 54 people. <laughs> <laughs> there were six different billies there <laughs> um but yeah i just i i don't i don't think that they made it up now i think the more interesting question is not so much whether or not this is real i think the interesting question is let's let, we're operating under the assumption that they saw something that cannot be explained away by something natural okay okay were they alien or is this something that lives here all the time well, because the could only be... reason why we think they're aliens is because Billy Ray saw that thing in the sky, but that very easily could have been a meteor. Yeah, it could be. It could be two separate events. He saw a natural mm -hmm. phenomenon, and then coming up out of the caves, he these goblins <laughs> came I after mean, them. That's a hell of a coincidence, but hey, they they do happen. <laughs> and it could also be who's to say that they aren't aliens that landed here in the past and just stayed <laughs> so it's they, they, i like the weather there in kentucky <laughs> yeah it's it's nice and temperate winters aren't too bad summers are pretty warm but if you go down in the caves it's 52 degrees all year long so there's moonshine and guns everywhere it's great <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what do you think I personally, i don't i don't go for the alien thing myself i i do think that they're a uh, uh, some sort of creature that's endemic to the, the area. I think that I think they are some sort of a, uh, possibly a cave dwelling creature. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before I had ever even heard of the story, I've actually seen something <laughs> like this myself that was near a cave uh, that was back at a, a quote unquote haunted cemetery. One of our more fun ones here. And I've, I've never seen a ghost out there, but I did see something that I would have considered a goblin. And years later, when I found out about this, you know, and started really digging into high strangeness and seeing the sketches of it, I'm like, that looks like what I saw. Wow. So really? I, yeah. I, I do think that there's something that's, I think it's something here. I think it's something that, that uh, was already there and they just kind of came out, whatever it was, they, they found them that night. I think that's, that's my personal belief on it is is it something that was a flesh and blood creature that was here it could be a little gray man you know whatever you want to call it but i i think it's something that's here that is interesting yeah one of my friends uh saw this and uh saw these <laughs> whatever it is he's a little creature a little humanoid type creature and um she saw it in west virginia yeah, no surprise. And this was yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't like something she, you know, she disclosed to me, you know, after I am who I am. And she just, you know, she wanted it. This was like well before I did any of this. <laughs> um, I mean, and so, you know, the fact that she had that encounter and then it was like, you know, of course, the way that a lot of these weird stories go in my life, I remember later on in my life. She also, um, I really, you know, I've talked about this on the Wednesday show before, and I really got to get the details on it. She had like popped off with a story at one point. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, and she was like, oh, do you remember when, you know, you were in school and like they did this thing? You know, did you guys ever have that happen? Like when you were in like preschool and, I, you know, we were all like, I, I, I wish I could remember what it was she said because we were all so fucking baffled. We're like, dude you got experimented on by the government. Like, that's not normal. <laughs> and I, I keep teasing everybody, and I'm like, I really need to find out what this is. And then, like, I, I'll find out, and then it just, I forget about it again. So one of these days, I'll remember. But, um, yeah, and then she went on to, to see one of these things in, in West Virginia. Again, are, are those two things related? I don't know, but <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it back up another day and, and still forget about it. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, people do see these interesting creatures. Another creature that is a lot more popular um, 
well, I'm not saying a lot more popular than the goblins, but like more popular than than probably what Jimothy saw, the Dover Demon. That's a very similar looking creature. I, you know, I've heard the story, but I don't think I've ever looked it up. I'm going to look oh. it up while you're. Go, yeah, go ahead and pull up a picture of it. Okay, uh, the drawing yeah. of it. Yeah, you it's see? kind of the same, like big bulbous looking head mm-hmm. and like weird long fingers and everything. Yeah, that's, uh, it could be kind of the same thing. Not exact, but very similar. Um, you know, and so, but I mean, if you look at humans, we're not all exact, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's like the difference between a turtle and a tortoise, you know? It's, it's still the same, like, genus, but a different other scientific classification just, that I don't know how to explain. Or, or a chihuahua and a German shepherd. Like, they're both exactly. dogs, right? Even better. Very different. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Which, from the sounds of it, the Hopkinsville goblins were definitely chihuahuas. <laughs> they were the chihuahuas of the cave dwelling <laughs> creatures. <Yes. laughs> they could be, yeah. They were very tiny. Um, <laughs> it's like a possibility. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, we get it. We can. You can take this in so many directions, and that's what I love about the story is that it, it is truly a rabbit hole um, that that you could chase. I mean, forever. You could take it one step further. They're uh, they're. Um, genetically incestuously bred Dwinde, you know they're just <laughs> little <laughs> gnomes they're <laughs> the bad the bad genes of the gnomes you know who knows um well it is kentucky so i mean <laughs> it's kentucky <laughs> it's just what they do there um allegedly it's the it's the Mexican aliens, you know those Mexican alien bodies that just came out. <laughs> well, they just come out recently. Um, but the definitely real Mexican the aliens, totally yes, totally real, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it could it could be so many things, and like I said, that's why I love this story. It's 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 got it all, you know. It's got a shootout and creatures and Billy Ray clown cars, it. clown cars, yeah. <laughs> the military you know it's it's very exciting stuff um so i don't know i i i find it interesting that you think it's something that lives here i can't say that you're wrong because i don't know i would like to think it's aliens um but i could be wrong you know um and i think but i think that's kind of the question that we should be starting to to wonder now um did it happen i think we're past that something happened um, something definitely happened yeah something happened and i just i think it's beyond it's beyond the norm it's beyond uh owls that's for sure and uh in my opinion i guess i can't say i wasn't there you know i don't fucking know <laughs> wasn't there um so anyway do you have any uh closing thoughts about the goblins or yeah it's just it's again it's it's one of my my favorite stories it's it's a great thought experiment of you know trying to figure out you know what could it have been was it aliens was it something that was already here why did they i guess we know why they got termed little green men that's the the based on sci-fi writers and the media taking that and right. twisting it as they do but you know what what was it what 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 could it have been that's the the, the biggest question and takeaway on that and it's we'll never know Will they come back? That's that's I, another question. Are they going to come back again? Have they been coming back? And are did they ever leave? There's, there's so many questions. <laughs> My door is always open if they want to come here. Um, just saying, I won't be a weirdo. I'll let you in my house. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to shoot at you if you no. if you come here. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're good. Um, so I'm just saying, if you guys need a place to stay, just let me know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, o- open invite to all hop gobs. <laughs> all the hop gobs. Um, yeah, I think it's it's uh, yeah, it's a fun story. Um, you know, I think folks should check it out. Uh, George Dudding actually probably wrote the most comprehensive book about it. Um, I think it's called the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter or something along those lines. Uh, George has written a lot of books about a lot of things. Um, he was actually a uh, witness to the silver bridge collapse. So he's an interesting fellow. If you've never heard of him, check him out. Hmm. Um, I promise I'm not plugging people every show. Well, I might fuck it. Why not? Let's spread the love you guys. Um, you know, get on Amazon, go buy George Dunning's book. Um, because like I said, nobody else has ever written to that extent about the story um so check that out and uh with that being said guys we'll see you back here for the next episode